Greetings and welcome to my channel. On today's menu we have story about one of the most prolific serial killers in American history, Patrick Vane Kearney. Also known as the Freeway Killer, the nickname he shares with two other serial killers, William Bonin and Randy Croft, but also as the Trashback Killer. He is also rapist, cannibal and necrophile. His victims were young men in California that he preyed upon since 1962 until 1977. According to law enforcement, Patrick claims possibly as many as 43 victims. Before we go deeper into the story of this horrific killer, please like, share, comment and subscribe, that will help me a lot. In case you need any copyright-free background videos for your own creations, visit my other channel, Monarch Free Videos, like and subscribe and feel free to use the videos any way you like, no need to ask for permission. Now it's time to fasten your seatbelts and join the ride into insanity. Kearney was the oldest of three sons and was raised in a fairly stable family. His early life was not without trauma. As a thin and sickly child, he was often a target for bullies at school. In his teens, he became withdrawn and fantasized about killing people. Born in East Los Angeles, California, Kearney also lived in Texas. He moved back to California after a brief marriage ended in divorce and eventually worked as an engineer for Hughes aircraft. It was from experience in his early years in California that Kearney cultivated his skill as a gay pickup artist. Kearney mostly sought out partners in San Diego and Tijuana, Mexico, where he used his fluency in Spanish and keen interest in Latin American culture as a basis to connect with potential partners. Kearney claimed to have killed his first victim, a hitchhiker, he picked up and murdered in Orange, California around 1962. He claimed several more victims before moving to Redondo Beach near Los Angeles in 1967 with a younger man named David Hill who became his lover. As time passed, Hill and Kearney began to argue more often and Kearney would go out for long solitary drives in his Volkswagen Beetle or his truck. He would then pick up and kill young male hitchhikers or young men from gay bars. Kearney was considered a necrophile and was generally consistent in the manner in which he murdered his victims and disposed of their remains. Standing only 5 feet 5 tall, being of slight build and typically preferring victims of greater stature than his, Kearney was forced to resort to a system of subduing his victims that was unlikely to fail or create situations which could place him in physical danger or cause unwanted exposure to authorities. He was not known to resort to sadism or inflicting pain on his victims as the other freeway killers. While Kearney did later confess to have experimented with his victims' bodies out of curiosity, such as cutting open one of their stomachs, he did so post-mortem and did not inflict any physical suffering. Kearney confessed to having committed his first murder in the spring of 1962. The victim's name is unknown, but he was confirmed to be age 19 and white. Kearney had convinced the male to take a ride on his motorcycle with him to a secluded area outside of Indio, California. When they arrived, Kearney shot the man in the head and sexually assaulted the body. It is unknown if the body was ever found, but Kearney did indeed confess to committing this murder and two additional ones during 1962. The second victim was the younger cousin of Kearney's first victim, who had witnessed Kearney drive away with the victim. The first murder that Kearney confessed to and was convicted of occurred sometime around Christmas of 1968, while he was living in Culver City, approximately one year after he and David Hill had taken residence together. The murder took place inside his residence. According to Kearney, this victim was lured into his vehicle in San Diego a taken to his home, then shot in the head moments after entering the house. 
The victim was then dragged into his bathroom, where he was sodomized, then skinned and dismembered in the bathtub with an X-Acto knife. Kearney also extracted the bullet from the victim's head to ensure the murder would not be traced to him. He then buried the dissembled body behind his garage. Kearney did not kill for over a year following this murder, primarily out of the fear that law enforcement would inquire about George's disappearance. As time passed, Kearney greatly refined his modus operandi, which enabled him to carry out his crimes much more efficiently and frequently. Starting in 1974, Kearney is estimated to have committed murders on an almost monthly basis. After picking up his victims along the freeway or at gay bars in his Volkswagen or in his truck, Kearney would typically shoot his victim in the temple about the ear with Derringer 22 pistol in his right hand, while steering his car with his left hand and simultaneously monitoring the speed limit to minimize the predictability of the altercation and to avoid exhibiting any unusual behavior to potential witnesses. After murdering his victims, Carney would leave the body slumped upright in the passenger seat and drive to a secluded area to sexually violate them. After copulating with his victims' corpses, Kearney would usually mutilate and dismember the remains with a hacksaw before disposing of them in various locations, such as canyons, landfills and along the freeway, usually in industrial trash bags. In some cases, Kearney disposed of the bodies in the desert, where they could be consumed by animals. Kearney would sometimes drain the victim's blood to eliminate odor and would also sometimes bathe the body parts prior to disposal to minimize the presence of dried blood and eliminate fingerprint evidence. Sometimes Kearney would beat his victims after they were dead. He perceived beating his dead victims as cathartic exercise and the means by which he could efficiently vent suppressed anger and acquire a sense of power. Often the victims resembled people who had bullied him in his childhood. Although Kearney preyed on young men, they were known child and adolescent victim as well. Kearney's youngest victim was Ronald Dean Smith, age 5, who disappeared in Lenox, California on August 24, 1974. His body was discovered in Riverside County on October 12, 1974. Merle Hondo Chance, 8, of Venice, vanished on April 6, 1977, while supposedly riding his bicycle in the vicinity of Kearney's place of work. Kearney claims to have smothered the boy, taken his body home overnight and later disposed of the remains in the Angeles National Forest. Chance's decomposed remains were discovered on May 26, 1977. Merle Chance was Kearney's last known victim. On June 16, 1976, Kearney killed Michael Craig McGee, 13, of Rodendo Beach. Records confirm that McGee had lengthy history of juvenile delinquency. Kearney claimed to have picked up McGee, who was hitchhiking from Inglewood Avenue near Lenox to Torrance. According to police, Kearney had befriended the boy and invited him to attend the camping trip over the course of weekend. Kearney claimed to have perceived McGee as a potential threat and shot him without warning, after McGee openly boosted of his criminal exploits and inquired about the presence and locations of alarms in Kearney's home. Later, when interviewed by detectives, Kearney implied that he had destroyed the remains, stating I disposed of the body, you aren't going to find him. The victim who ultimately led to Kearney's arrest was John Otts LaMay, 17, whom he killed on Sunday, March 13, 1977. At approximately 5.30 pm on the same day, LaMay had told a neighbor he was going to Redondo Beach to meet a man named Dave, whom he had met at the gym. This was in fact David Hill, who had given LeMay the address of Kearney's home. Hill was absent when LeMay arrived, so Kearney invited him to watch television until Hill returned. Without provocation, Kearney impulsively reached for his pistol and shot LeMay in the back of his head. 
Kearney later dismembered the corpse and dumped the remains in the desert. When his killing spree was at its zenith, Kearney's odd tendencies were largely undetected. A local grocery store owner named Jerry Stevens did, however, note that Kearney frequently purchased butcher knives after examining them and inquiring about the quality of the steel. Stevens also described Kearney as a loner with an eerie sense of quiet about him. Kearney's supervisor as Hughes' aircraft referred to him as a model worker. LaMay remains were found on March 18, 1977. Police had actually been to Kearney's home for the LaMay investigation prior to Chance's kidnapping and murder. The police soon discovered that LaMay have been seen in the company of Kearney and Hill. The two fled to El Paso, Texas and Kearney resigned from his job. The fugitives' families proceeded to pair to turn themselves in. Hill, 36 year old at the time, was eventually cleared of any involvement in Kearney's crimes and was released. Kearney made a full confession, initially admitting to a total of 28 murders and subsequently to seven more. In order to avoid the death penalty, he agreed to plead guilty. Kearney was charged with 21 counts of murder and, as agreed, pleaded guilty. He was given 21 life sentences. Police are certain that Kearney was responsible for the other seven murders he had admitted to, but lacked the physical evidence to charge him. Kearney is incarcerated at California State Prison, Mule Creek, as of October 2014. I have to admit, this guy is real madman and as evil as they get. And one thing is for sure, I will never ever hitchhike and I hope you won't either. If you have any scary stories, true or fictional, creepypasta, legends from your country, anything that fits this channel content, please feel free to send it my way. Emails are on the screen and in the description box. Before you go, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for stopping by, stay safe and I'll see you soon.